far as I can uh, remember, I always hated walking. <laughs> <laughs> what I liked was building, you know, tents on stilts and scaffoldings and wooden structures. And why walking? Why, why, why taking time, wasting liters of sweat to get there? You know, there, there's a very convenient invention with four wheels that can shorten uh, the pain. Why, why suffer? Why walk? And uh, it took me uh, my lifetime to understand the beauties of walking. That's why my first journey uh, was on a bicycle. I went around the world with my best friend on a bicycle just after I graduated. The idea was very childish. Uh, I confess, was to go straight forward forever and to, to see if we would come back to Paris. <laughs> From Paris to Paris, via Dakar, uh, Buenos Aires, Valparaiso, uh, Massa, uh, Delhi, Tehran, and finally uh, back home. Yes, we proved it was a sphere. <laughs> so uh, cycling was definitely too, uh, too fast. You know, you always uh, are stuck to roads and, and and you're in the way. So uh, the next journey was in the Himalayas where we first tried walking with still my best friend. And as you know, uh, in, in the Himalayas there are very few roads, so you have to walk. And as you know as well, it's not particularly flat. So we walked from Bhutan to Tajikistan, crossing uh, nine countries, sneaking in and sneaking out illegally, without visa, without passport. We wanted to really experience the freedom of walking free as locals can be. It's by doing this experience of walking hard into a hard condition with wonderful people that I really learned uh, the beauties and the treasures of walking can provide you. And it was really a life-changing experience. That walking the whole Himalayan range in one sweep, in, uh, in one go, between these uh, two, uh, two countries, Bhutan and Tajikistan. And the first treasure we discovered were, was uh, the people. Walking provides meeting people, real people, true people. Doesn't mean that the people you meet on the streets or on the roads of the world are not true. But they, they are, as I said, belonging to the web and where ideas are almost the same. You share a community of drivers, you share the same TV series, the same songs, the same music, wherever you are in India. When you are in the roads, you are in that web. And if you want to meet real people, uh, you have to go backstage. And the, the stage is it's just a scene sold by the tourism industry. And it's very easy to go beyond and go backstage, where more true people uh, are there, welcoming and very hospitable and have more traditions and have been less corrupted by our meeting and meeting us and being in the web. I mean, it's nice to be in the web, but it's not aliens. You don't discover. Uh, read colors, you know the colors of that life because you are part of that life too. And as a traveler, what, I, what, what I'm interested in is to go beyond, to find new people, new ideas, new traditions. And this, you can find them by walking only. You know, who hasn't suffered here from being taken as a legged purse? You know? If you climb down a bus in India or in Bali or in Morocco, uh, you have problems interacting with people because the money is there and you represent a world that has money and they have less money. And so it's very difficult to have true relationships. But in the Himalayas, you can't skip walking. You have to walk to meet people. And then I realized it changed completely of the relationship you have with these people. Because you have suffered for, for it, you have taken chances, you have taken time, and walking changes the relationship you have to people. You are welcome walking. Whereas in Africa, when you arrive in a car, when you arrive in with a lot of things and gear, it's more problematic. So walking made a real difference into the interaction and the meeting. When we walked Africa with Sonia, everybody said, no, no, you can't do it, you're going to be divorced, you're going to be raped, you're going to be stolen, everything you have. You can't take that chance and you can't take your wife into such a long ordeal. And that's exactly the, proof, the contrary that, that happened. 1,200 days we were welcomed, we were by open hearts, and people revealed the best in themselves. And we had to reveal the best of ourselves. You know, the relationship goes on, on, always both ways. And how would that happen, you know? And how would that work? You know, we would walk in the morning, wake up, and never knew in the evening where we would end up. So, walking was a tedious thing. 10 hours a day, 
we have to talk together, we have to be together, and then people came to us. We thought we were going towards them, but in fact, that's the contrary that happens. People come to you, adventure comes to you. Adventure is not going forward to get into trouble. Adventure, is, it's the Latin root of the word, is to let things happen, to be in a state ready to deal with them. So, in fact, we were ready and moving along these roads, and people would come to us with curiosity, with hospitality, with generosity, with what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and, and who were these people? We were waiting for them all day long. We were coining them or calling them our savior of the day. Who is going to be our savior of the day today? And that savior was embodied into a young chap coming back from school or an old lady coming back from markets or a man coming back from his fields or his forests with his hoe on, on the shoulder. And these were the potent people, the powerful people that would save us and rescue from our misery, thirst, hunger, angst. You know, where are we going to be tonight? In whose hands are we going to fall? For me, that was the interest of it, not walking. You know, walking is not an end. It's just a mean to meet people, as I said. And that was a, a, a renewed treasure for 1,200 days. And that savior of the day never missed. He was always there. And that's the miracle that walking creates. It happens. Things, it makes things happen to you. Second uh, treasure that I discovered is time. We often think walking is a waste of time. And we are all busy, too busy. We are all running up and down, fast and furious, being projected into the next future, schedules, appointments, be there, do that. We are doing machines, but are we being we forget to be being souls, being humans. And walking is devoted time, you know? Since, since a man that you might know called Einstein, uh, time and space are interspersed, uh, connected. If you want to experience time, you first have to experience space. And walking is actually the only human way to experience space. And during that, uh, time expands. It's long to walk. Walk an hour, it's long. Walk ten hours, it's long. Walk a thousand days, ten hours a day, it's long. And then you start having a real experience of, of what is time. Time is your life devoted to something that can enlarge. You know, by running all over the place, we have a, a feeling of frustration. We have no grasp on our lives. We, we think we are part of a, a stream that we can't control. Whereas when you walk, and I'm walking now. <laughs> you enjoy life and time more deeply because it becomes, it becomes extended. You build memories, you build up memories. How does that work? You, you think of people when you walk. You think of, of, of relationships you have had, conversations you haven't had and you should have had. You think of all the mishaps of your life. You think of your burden, your karma, your, your failures. And walking is the pace heartbeats, with the rhythm, with the breathing, with being outside, uh, helps you to lift that weight. And that burden collapses minute, hour by hour by hour. So, and you become more free, and you, you understand that problems are not within you, they are outside of you. And uh, it, it gives you an amazing uh, feeling of, uh, of, of freedom. The third uh, treasure uh, you, you, you discover while walking, and that's the connection with the other one, is yourself. You discover that uh, your life, uh, sedentary life, was uh, interconnected with other problems, other people's problems. And it works within you like a therapy, I would say. Walking helps you to resolve the, the issues of your life, and you come back uh, uh, more free and maybe a better soul. There is a fourth treasure as well, uh, that you discover while walking, and that's conflict resolution. You know, when we walk with Sonia, we have to talk, because that's what you fill your day with, talking, talking, talking. There is nothing much else to do when you walk. We think we are living in a, in a society of uh, communication, <coughs> and in fact, we hardly communicate. We are all busy with our own lives, and even with the closest soul in our life, our wife, what is it as a communication? Ten minutes in the morning, one hour at night, yeah. We, in the evening, to, to talk about what, uh, who's going to walk down the garbage, who's going to fix that uh, leaking toilet, who's going to pay the tax, the rent, or whatever materialistic things. Do we spend 
time to talk truly with the closest soul we have engaged uh, with. No, unfortunately not. And walking is a real solution. So please go and walk with your mate. Go and walk with your son. If you have a problem with your son, go and walk with your neighbor. If you have a problem with your neighbor, and after a couple of uh, hours, maybe, your ideas will converge, and what was appearing conflicting won't be anymore. Because in our tradition, in our society, when we have a problem, we sit at a table, and we are face to face. And straight away, for a minute, the table becomes and turns into a ring. You're boxing, your arguments. And if it's not a ring, it's just a ping pong. Ping, and then pong. <laughs> I don't care what you're telling me. And so there is no there is no real communication. Whereas when you walk side by side, like we did for quite a long time, you have understood that. Uh, I had to listen. I couldn't escape. She was talking to me. Sometimes I was trying to accelerate. <laughs> Uh, where we are, as men, you know. I had to listen, and, and then I had to respond. So we had to talk and talk and talk, and only communication can go uh, and attack uh, problems and issues. You know, this is something we should inspire the, the leaders of the world. Instead of meeting into big gatherings, like let's say Mr. Mr. Putin and Obama, I'm sure if they we let them alone, or with one liter of water in a desert, <laughs> to go walking side by side, oh, straight away, in 10 hours' time, we, they would come out with much easier, much faster solutions, and they would agree on things much faster than meeting in the city and then, no issue, okay, let's meet somewhere else. Like if changing places would change uh, the issues. No, walking is something you can't skip, it's something you can't avoid, it's something you can't accelerate, something you can't buy, it's something you have to do. So, I advise you uh, to walk. And for me, it was a life-changing experience in terms of connecting with people I wouldn't have connected otherwise. And I remember that old man in Africa saying to me, but why are you walking? In order to meet you. But why not in the car? Because in the car, I wouldn't have seen you. And you know, that made me reflect on what was happening very simply, very humbly, every day. And people were thanking us for that. Say, no, come on, don't reverse. We thank you for being generous, hospitable, putting us in, feeding us eventually. We had food, but if they wanted to give us something, we wouldn't say no. So it was part of the interaction as well. Thank you to have come and walked and sacrificed time, comfort, comfort uh, security, and to have uh, made the meeting possible. You know, I wasn't a walker always. Because at 13, I was half a millimeter close to a tetraplegy. In the hospital, I was for a year being operated, being saved by my, my doctors and surgeons. I was the only one with legs. So I became the pet of the nurses. You know, I was the youngest and I had legs that could go around. Having legs, uh, I knew it was something very, very precious. When I was broken, uh, then I had a gymnastic teacher that really restored confidence and health uh, in my health and in my body, and I started to do funny things. I was not a walker at that time. I was more into extreme sports. Yeah, that's on, on Notre Dame. You mentioned I was a climber. I'm not a climber anymore, but I like to climb things. There is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> but that was another period of my life before I understood the virtues of, uh, of walking. You think when you're walking, you are walking, but in fact you are doing much more. You are flying. You are flying above ground. You have the whole earth forever for yourself. And it's uh, my way to come alive. And it's uh, the way uh, I met uh, most people doing the same when you meet them.